Alright, so here's your next lesson on quadratic functions and we've got two more quadratic function forms. How the equation looks. We've got vertex form and intercept form. Last lesson was all about standard form. y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So we're going to learn two new ones and uh, specifically like on number one here, objective one, we're going to be graphing the things. If your equation is given to you in vertex form or inter intercept form, how do you graph it? Um, and then uh, objective two, being able to take those three forms, you got your standard, your intercept, and your vertex form, and being able to turn them into any one of the other ones. Okay? Valuable life skills. So, um, take a look at our first objective. I, I broke up objective one in two parts so we can look at vertex form and then the intercept form. The first part of it, let's look at vertex form. And what you see here is a snowboarder. I don't know what the guy's name is. Uh, anyway, whenever he does his trick and he launches into the air, his path traces out a parabola, as you can see. And I have come up with the equation for this parabola and graphed it for you, and that's what you see displayed there. The equation, as it's written, is in vertex form. So let's uh, actually start off with a little bit of a review here for the warm-up. We're going to graph an absolute value function that y equals 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 4 using SRT transformations. So it's been a while probably for the SRT transformations. Let's uh, review those for a bit. Uh, so I call them SRT transformations. The S stands for scaling. S K A Ling. There we go. And the scaling happens from our A value, and our A value is the 2 in this case. And that always happens times the Y, the Y coordinates of all the points on the parent function. All right, that's the S in the SRT transformations. And then we have an R for reflection, so we're reflecting. And in Algebra 2, there's only one thing you reflect across, and that's the x-axis. In pre-cal, we'll start reflecting across the y-axis. It'll be a little different. Anyway, so I know I'm going to reflect across the x-axis if I have a negative right up front, if my a value is negative. I got a positive 2, I'm not going to be reflecting on this one. And then finally, our t is for translating. So our translate happens with the 3 and the 4 that are in here. And that moves it left, right, up, down. Left, right, and up and down. Again, from the parent function. So let's uh, specifically look at the S, the R, and the T for this absolute value equation. My S, what is that? What am I scaling by? Well, like I said, it's the 2. And how do I deal with that? I multiply that 2 times each of the y-coordinates on the parent function. R is next. Am I reflecting it? Am I? Nope. I am not reflecting it because my a value is positive 2 and not a negative 2, so nope on the reflection. Translating. I am translating it. It's the 3 and the 4. But watch yourself here. I'm going 3 to the right and up 4. Why is it 3 to the right instead of 3 to the left? Because that's a negative 3. Remember, when it's associated with the x, this sucker is lying to you. Your x's lie, but y's don't, so this one tells the truth. Okay, all of these from the parent function. So we got to graph the parent function first, like so. Very nice. V-shape for the absolute value. Now we're just going to go point by point and do these transformations. So we'll start at the origin there. 2 times the y-coordinate. y-coordinate origin is 0. 0 times 2 is 0. Oh, there you go. It's in blue. Now I'm going to take that blue point and reflect it across. Nothing. All right. And then uh, now move it right 3 and up 4. So here's your right 3 that's in green. Now take that point and move it up 4 spaces. There you go. There's the new vertex of that um, absolute value. All right, and let's go to 1, 1. 1, 1, the y-coordinate is 1, so we're going to times that by 2, and we get 2. It's the blue point. 
Do I have to reflect it? No, just skip it. And now let's move on to translating. I'm going to move it right three. So that's the green point. And now up four. And that's the color. Is that magenta? Okay. All right. Now, if you know enough about the graphs on this, it also has an axis of symmetry. You could just reflect that across and you'd be done with it. But let's just go ahead and do the one at one, negative one, just because. Negative one, one, negative one, one. Yeah. So the y coordinate is at one. We're going to times that by two. It's going to be at two. Don't have to reflect, but move it right three. It's there at the green one, and then up four. That would be enough to graph, but here's just a couple of more of these points here going through each of the SRT transformations. And then, of course, you put your V shape in there. Now, I bring this up because if your equation, if your quadratic function is in vertex form, this is exactly how you graph it, SRT transformations, and it's a piece of cake. So, let's look at that vertex form on Geometer Sketchpad. Look at a demo, and actually we're going to relate it to what we've seen before in standard form. Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C, what the A, the B, and the C do. And then... Uh, look at what all the parameters are going to do on the new form, on vertex form. Alright, so in this uh, little sketch pad demo, we're going to investigate the three different kinds of uh, quadratic functions, what they're going to look like, three different forms. So the first one is kind of a review. We've looked at the standard form AX squared plus BX plus C, and we talked about what that A and the C do. So, for example, if I click on this A and I make it bigger than 1, it gets skinnier. If I make it between 0 and 1, it fattens up. And if I make it negative, it flips over. Right? All those good things. Now, uh, then we talked about the C. The C scooched or moved our parabola up and down like so. I don't have to take my word for it, just look at your eyes. There you go. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we said something about this B value. We didn't talk about it much, just that it kind of moved it left around right in some kind of way. Now, for example, this is on 3. The B value is on 3. Even though it's 3, it doesn't give you kind of an indication on the graph what that 3 does. Okay, so let's look at a different form of this quadratic function, mainly the vertex form, b of x. Vertex form looks like this, a times x minus h squared plus k. So the a value, let's just look. Does the a value do the same thing that it did before? Fat, skinny, skinny, fat, flip it over. Why, certainly it does. Okay, now, let's see what the H and the K will do. Let me make my H bigger. Get rid of this point. I don't know why that's on there. H bigger. See, it's at 4. Look at this. It's, it's moved it over to the right 4. Let me move it over here. It's at negative 1. It's moved it to the left 1. So this controls left-right motion, and it's the same exact number. If it's 3, it's moving 3 to the right. Okay, now let's try the k value. If I make it bigger, it moves up. If I make it smaller, it moves down. But specifically, it's exactly that number, how many times are, how many spaces up it's going to move. That 2, it's exactly up 2. Negative 1, it's exactly down 1. Now, more than that, the reason why it's called the vertex form is because look at this H in the K. Let me put it on something interesting like this. 3 and 2 for my H and my K. Look at this parabola where it's at. 3, 2 is exactly at that vertex point. Let me put a big old fat point there so you can see it. Roger. So this is why it's called the vertex form, because the H and the K give you the, the coordinates of the vertex of your quadratic function. The A will still make it fatter or skinnier and flip it upside down. 
and the H is going to move it left to right, K, okay, up, down. So, when your quadratic function is in vertex form, it looks like this. Y equals A times X minus H squared plus K. And remember the A does the same thing on the vertex form as it used to do on the standard form. And that is, it makes it uh, skinnier if it's bigger than 1, fatter if it's uh, between 0 and 1, and then reflects it across rant, 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 if it's negative. And the H and the K move it left, right, up, and down. Yes? Specifically, what is the H and the K? Hint. It's called the vertex form. The H and the K are the coordinates of the vertex. Yeah? Now, uh, what about the axis of symmetry? Well, since axis of symmetry passes through the vertex, it's going to have the same x coordinate. So that's just x equals h, just like you see in that picture. Um, now, I think you're going to grow to really, really like the vertex form. You're going to become partial, partial to it, I think. It is it's probably my favorite quadratic function form. What about you? Well, why don't you wait and make that judgment after you see the intercept form, which is coming up in, uh, in a little bit. Anyway, so let's do a little bit of algebra here. What is the y-intercept of the graph of, and it's in vertex form, y-intercept? Well, when it was in standard form, it was just the c value. So do you think the y-intercept here is just the k value? No, it's not. Okay, so let's, let me just look at a graph here, and if, if I put a dot on the y-axis, its x-coordinate is always equal to 0. So just in general, if you have yourself an equation, you're trying to find the x-intercept, I'm sorry, y-intercept, y-intercept, you plug in 0 for x and then uh, simplify it down. So let's do that. y equals a times 0 for x minus h squared plus my k. And uh, 0 minus h, just negative h, but I'm going to square it, and it's going to become positive. So y is equal to a times h squared plus k. And that's it. Now, this is not a formula that I want you to memorize. We are just demonstrating our algebra skills on the general equation. Like, there's no numbers there. But that's the process that you'd be going through if it did have numbers in it. How do you find the y-intercept? Well, you just plug in 0 for x and then solve it for y.